Come, Mama. Let me help you. Amen. I want to help you. Amen. I want to help you. Is it okay if I help you? Yes. I want to help you because I looked at you and I felt sorry for you. Can Mama understand? Can you translate for her? I felt very sorry for her. It broke my heart because I saw you standing at a funeral. I saw her standing at a funeral. I saw one that happened a few years ago. And while you were there heartbroken, I saw one of your sisters standing next to you. I don't know if this is the third one or which one it is, but I saw another sister standing next to her. Can she hear me? I don't know if she's the third one. But when I saw her sister standing next to her, I saw this one also going to a funeral and one of the sisters was being buried. Professor. We need to pray for your sister. If we don't pray for her, she's going to die. I am seeing one of our sisters sick. She's at the brink. If we don't pray, she will go. But I want God to extend her life. Yes. Can she hear me, Mama? Yes. Does she know her sister is sick? Yes. Ah, Mama. Yes. You know your sister is sick. Yes. We need She's to save her life. She's in hospital. Yes. Cla- yes. Zoom, zoom. We need to rescue her. We need to rescue her. We need to rescue her because let me tell Mama what I'm seeing. Is it okay if I tell yes, Papa, yes. I saw some kind of ulcer that started within the abdomen. Are you listening to me? Yes, yes. Do you know what it was? Yes. There was an ulcer like eating something in the stomach. It started in here. Yes, yes, Papa, yes, yes. Professor. Professor. I am standing in the hospital. I am looking at they were trying to treat something within the stomach area. Mm. It's true. It affected the intestines and things like that. It's true. It started yes. destroying other organs. They don't really understand what is really, even until now, they still don't really know what it is. It's true. What I am seeing in the hospital, they are just putting IVs, 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 trying to manage the situation, but they are hopeless because even the doctors don't really know what it is. It's true. Prophesy. Prophesy. But Jehovah God knows what is happening. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If we pray, we can disrupt it. Amen. So we need to cancel this death. Amen. Please. And God will hear from heaven. And God will do this to prove to her that Jesus lives. You know, people are told prophets are not real. But they will know that Jesus lives. And Jesus is the one that is telling me about her sister. I don't have a way to know. Please lift your hands, Mama. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Tell her to close her eyes. Tell her to look to Jesus. Tell her to look to God and just say thank you. In her own language, she does. Just, just tell Mama in her ears to look to Jesus and just say thank you. Yeah. You see, when you are a prophet, not with the gift, you know too much. You just speak what is the most important thing to our heart. Amen. Amen. You understand? Not saying that the other things will not be touched. They will be touched. Okay? 
when I was talking to, to her about her sister, let me tell you what I saw, okay? I saw an incident that was weird to me, and I was looking at this in a vision prophet. And it was weird to me because I saw a needle being put in her back. Huh? That's I saw a needle being put in her back. Prophesy. Are you listening to me? Prophesy. And it was not down here, but it is around somewhere here. Yeah. I saw an injection being put because of the pain. So I was asking myself in the vision, are they taking fluid? Are they putting something? What is going on? That's true. God is going to heal her. Yeah. I already know this. Yeah. Amen. I'm just not saying it because <laughs> it's not important. Her sister is the important. That one she will just realize it's gone. Amen. Amen. Not only that, your mother has headaches. Headaches. Right now. All these are small things to you. Those are small things. Being here has already disrupted that. Amen. These are small things. Small. Small. I am seeing your mother hearing on the right ear. Sometimes. Oh, Prophesy, Papa. Professor. I know these things. <laughs> I know. You see, while she's here, I know these things. You have to understand. You are just seeing me. You don't see the two angels that are standing with me, Prophesy. telling me what is happening. Zoom, zoom. I am just choosing not to say them because they are small things. Sometimes it disturbs us. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it comes back, sometimes it goes, that's sometimes true. it comes back. That's and it, true. that's actually part of the reason why she has headaches. Sometimes when that thing comes, she gets dizzy. That's true, that's I true. Professor. All these things, listen. You know, all these things, I am already, it is like you are seeing me here. There's a TV, I've watched this, I'm just choosing what part of the story matters the most. Amen. Tell Mama to close her eyes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, touch her. I am seeing in a spiritual vision. I don't know why. I am seeing you holding some documents in your hands. Are you listening to me? I am seeing a brown envelope. Those yellow brown envelope, whatever they're called, those big ones. Uh -uh. <laughs> Bro. Clap for Jesus. Bro. Bro. Are you listening to me? As yes, you sir. stood there, I was watching you holding it to me like this. Yes, sir. The Lord said it like this. You see, it's a, what is this, yellow? Yeah. The Lord told me this when I looked at you. He said, tell him what he has in his hands it's already approved amen it will work out go get what is yours <laughs> say in the mighty name of jesus i see my future i see my I see my destiny. I see my destiny. I see my open doors. I see my open doors. I see my success. I see my success. That will transcend my life. That will transcend my life. That will go to my children's 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 children. Children's 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 children. Begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. I see my success. I see my destiny. I see my new life. I see my transformation. I see my old life in the past. Jesus name. Jesus name.
We're on camera in five, four, three, two. God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe that God is doing something new in you and in me. And I'm excited about today's Revealed. And I think, uh, and actually not only think, I truly believe with everything that is in me that uh, God is really going to do something special in all of us. And I know that God is taking us to another dimension. So I'm not going to take too long. I'm going to take a little bit of time, not too much time, but just enough time um, and I, uh, I hope that you will learn something that will push you to your next dimension in Christ so that you may be effective for the kingdom of God, not only in saving souls, but also in inspiring people to know God better. You see, the things that you learn from me, it is not really just, I don't want you to be somebody that just absorbs information. It is of no use if you just have information on information and information on information. It makes no sense. The Bible says don't be just listeners of the word but doers. You know, the things of the spirit can be addictive, which is not bad. It's a good thing to be addicted to God. But don't just be somebody who's gathering information. But you're not effective in displaying any of the virtues of God that can change lives and bring people to the knowledge of God. Let's not be that. Let's be those who can receive something, meditate on it, start practicing it. Amen. That is what God wants. He doesn't want just random information, fun facts. Did you know that this is a fact? Did you know that this is a fact? Did you know? That doesn't help anybody. It doesn't do anything for anyone. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't do anything for anyone. So I want you to share this as many times as you can. Um, share it with somebody. Let somebody know. We will go deep into this. And then also remember Monday we have our deliverance service. Amen. It's going to be super powerful. It's going to be super amazing. Uh, I believe the flyer. I'm going to post the flyer today. Are we, do we have the flyer too? We have it, right? Okay, cool. So when people are giving, we'll go to it. But... Is going to be uh, phenomenal. I believe that it's going to uh, change lives. Amen. So today we are going on with uh, part two of the feet of God. And I explained to you what the hand of God is. Um, we can even go into the heart of God. Whenever the Bible speaks of God's heart, God also has a heart. Did you know that? Or you didn't know that? Yeah, God has a heart. Uh, no, you can have, angels have no heart, but they have feelings. Angels are spirit beings. They have no soul, but they have feelings. They have emotions. They can get offended. <laughs> yeah, they're not robots. Like, uh, this is off subject, but your spirit man has emotions too. Different from your soul completely. Oh, yeah. No, we are not teaching that. This, that's <laughs> prophetic school. You're not going to get me with that. <laughs> but they are completely different. You know, so they're, 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 they are completely different. They are not the same. Different stuff. Matthew, no, no, no. Genesis chapter 6. I believe verse 7. Genesis chapter 6, I believe verse 7. Genesis chapter 6, I believe verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creepy. Oh, actually, sorry. Go backwards. Go to verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Mm -hmm. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. 
There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the came unto the daughters of men, mm -hmm. they bare children to them. Mm -hmm. The same became mighty men which were of old, uh -huh. men of renown. Uh -huh. And God said, and God saw that's, that. That's, okay, yeah, that's it. Five. What verse is that? Verse 5. Verse 5, there we go, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of thoughts of his heart was also evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him in, at his heart. It grieved him what? At his heart. God has a heart. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it grieved him to his heart. Wow. It grieved him to his heart. It grieved him to his heart. Have you ever noticed the only time God says, don't grieve? Who does he talk about? The Holy Spirit. That's God's heart. Wow. Ah, <laughs> uh, you guys didn't, you guys missed it. I think I have the wrong people here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to the people online. The Lord Jesus is not the heart of God. Is the right hand of God. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Emotions are not attached to Jesus. But Jesus is even warning you, don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. If you hurt him, he may not forgive you. <laughs> Any sin against me will be forgiven. Against the Holy Spirit, you are in danger of losing your soul. So God's emotions are not generated from the person of Christ, but they're generated from the person of the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and, the, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered upon the waters, and God said, notice God always speaks after his spirit is in a place. Because his spirit carries his will. Because his spirit is his heart. That's, that's where the thoughts of God are. That's where the emotions of God are. That's where the feelings of God are. Okay, I'm done. But we'll go deep into it another time. No, we are talking about the feet of God. Do you guys want the feet of... Ah. <laughs> that is why the Holy Spirit gives the gifts as he wills. Because the will of God is in his spirit. The father doesn't give gifts. It is his heart that is compelled to give you gifts. <laughs> and they noticed that the spirit of God fell on the Gentiles just as the other ones. How did they, they were shocked? How, did it, how was God moved that he gave them what he gave us? Therefore, there is no more Gentile or Jew or Greek. We are all one in Christ. The treasure of God is his spirit. That's good. Make sense? Yes. So, but today we are speaking specifically <laughs> about the feet of God. If you're ready, just type, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, and then we'll ready. keep going. Ready. Let's see the people online. Did it make sense? Yes. Yeah. God came down from heaven, went to see Abraham and said, I have heard about the sins of these people. And it has gotten up to heaven. I have to come down and see it. I will wipe up the whole Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not, <laughs> is not as merciful. That's the most sensitive part of God. A broken spirit dries up the bones. The spirit is the most significant part of you. That is why the primary manifestation you, of God you see when you open the Bible is what? The Holy Spirit. And what does the Bible end with? The Holy Spirit given to everybody. It is not by strength or by might, but it is by what? My spirit. 
So the feet of God. We spoke about the hand of God. I explained that. I explained to you why the devil has no feet. Uh, the serpent in the garden, his feet were taken away. And I explained to you that if you sit at anybody's feet, you are absorbing whatever is in them. The only way you can receive what is in a person is by being at their feet. Is this making sense? Yes. So, and I was explaining this and this was uh, very difficult to express. But uh, nevertheless, I tried to. Understand that God, with his sovereign grace and sovereign mercy, has made available for us to be able to be at his feet. Reading your Bible is good, but it doesn't mean you're at his feet. Your personal study is good. It doesn't mean you're at his feet. Being in church is good. It doesn't mean you're at his feet. If the Holy Spirit cannot teach you, has never taught you, if your revelation is not increasing, if your understanding of God is not deepening, if it is not becoming more, you have never sat at his feet. You have never sat at his feet. There are a lot of people that think they have sat at the feet of the Lord. They haven't. They have never. This is why the church is stagnant in terms of spiritual growth. That if they see you manifesting anything that is of God beyond what they can do, they immediately demonize you. I'm sorry I have to say this. I was, watching, I was watching this man of God. He's a man of God. He calls himself prophet, but he's not a prophet. He's a man of God. I won't mention his name because I don't want you guys to attack him. But because we don't attack. But I'm just highlighting something. This man has been on a teaching spree. They watch our stuff and they try to teach. You know what I mean? But if God has not given you a certain grace, leave it alone. Yeah. It's okay. It is not for you. Yeah. Go to somebody. Let somebody pray for you. Yeah. Amen. This man of God was saying that um, the spirit of God, uh, he said, in the, the spirit of God was not given to the church to cast out demons. The spirit of God was not... Uh, uh, given to man so that uh, 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 you, you, you can heal the sick. And then he read uh, um, uh, Acts chapter 2. And you shall receive, uh, Acts chapter 1, and you shall receive power when the Spirit of God has come upon you. Then you shall be my witnesses. The Holy Spirit came so that you can preach. I said, this person has no idea what he's talking about. He said, you see, in the Old Testament, people cast out demons using authority, not the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit could not be in men. I grabbed myself like this. I said, oh, Lord Jesus, help us. Because the reason why people are teaching false doctrines, you see, there is a difference between I have not matured in my revelation and just write out teaching false doctrine. Yeah. Who told you the Holy Spirit didn't fill people in the Old Testament? The Holy Spirit did not fill everybody, but he filled specific people. Samson was full of the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. Samuel was full of the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. Isaac was full of the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. John the Baptist was full of the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. These things go on and on and on and on and on. Myself, myself, I never, I don't remember ever giving my life to Christ growing up. I just always knew God. I was telling my mom about the Lord quoting verses I didn't know. I already was speaking. In I didn't know how any of these things were happening, but I came to understand that I was ordained before I came. That doesn't mean I am better than anybody. It doesn't mean those people are better than anybody. It's just a different calling. Yeah. Don't create doctrines based on your little understanding where God is saying that Paul is telling you in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he tells you that the kingdom of God is not in word but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. Power is force, dunamis. The kingdom of God should not be in too much talking. Yeah. 
It should be more demonstrating. People have been talking too much. Jesus was not a talker. He said, let your answers be yes or no. But all these things are because people don't sit at the Lord's feet. And also because they don't know how to sit at the Lord's feet. Because this is different. I was talking to, uh, to my sons, um, Andrew, uh, Rio, and Maro. Uh, and, and I was talking, with, I was speaking with them. In my culture, there's no word for uncle. So it's only father. Big daddy, small daddy. So to me, they're all my sons. And actually, in, in, in my culture, it is also the same. So I was talking to my three sons and I was speaking to the oldest. I was speaking to Andrew and I was telling him, okay, you're about to be 13 in how many days? In 11 days. When you turn 13, by the time, you know, within a month or two, you're going to start prophesying in church. But I'm waiting for you to get this to this age. Then I'm going to open you up to certain things. The others are also waiting, but Rio has one more year. The other one has... Seven? Six? No, you're seven? No, you're not seven. No, you're not. All right, six years. It's going to be old enough. Because all of them have the prophetic, it's inherited, it's in their blood because of me. So, there are things I will open up to him at this point that I couldn't do before. Because of his age, maturity now, I can uh, bring him up into certain things that I could not before because he was still more on the child side. My prayer for you is that you mature so that God can give you his best. Amen. So how do we get to the master's feet? Remember, your feet represent journey, right? Yeah. The feet of a man represent journey and the ter territory they have covered. That is why the Bible says, wherever you, the soles of your feet shall trample upon, you will possess it. Mm -hmm. So where your feet are have been possessed because your feet have touched it, right? Mm -hmm. The feet represent possession. Make sense? So sitting at the master's feet, it means that whatever is in his control is also yours. Amen. 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 That's good. Amen. Yes. Did that make sense? Yes. yes. It doesn't only represent distance covered, but it also represents territory mm -hmm. that has been, uh, uh, um, that has been uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Captured or possessed. The journey is the experience of life, but it also represents the territories you have covered. When Jesus took his apostles and washed their feet, he told them, unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me. They said, Lord, then wash my whole body, Peter said to Jesus. And he said, you are already clean. You don't need your whole body to be washed, but your feet. Why was Jesus interested in washing their feet? <coughs> Jesus was about to go to the cross. People think that it meant serve one another. No. It had nothing to do with serving one another. It was a spiritual ritual. Jesus said, only your feet need cleaning, not your whole body. Yeah. It means their past was going to prevent them from entering into the future that Jesus had for them. So they needed to go through a purification yes. that now they will cover new ground as the Lord is about to ascend. Amen. Are these amens I don't like it? You, peop you people's energy is too, too low for me. I wish the people online were here with me. Maybe. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Is this making sense? Yes. He said, only your feet need cleaning, meaning that without the cleansing of the feet, because your feet also represents your past. Where you have been. That's so good. 
So if you sit at the Lord's feet, you also go where he has been. Yes. He is the same yesterday, yes. today, and forever. Mm -hmm. You will be with him where he has been, where he is, and also where he is going. Making sense so far? Yes. yes. So now, how do we come to the master's feet? The only way you are able to come at the master's feet How do I explain this? I'm, I'm looking for perfect words to give you. How do you sit at the master's feet? God can never give you a place that you don't see the importance of it. Ooh, that's so good. Without the importance of something, God cannot grant it to you. It's true. God must weigh your heart to see what something means to you before he can give it to you. Because to sit at his feet is a dimension. You see, the Lord Jesus always sat at his father's feet. That is why he said, the son only does what he has seen his father do. Of myself, I can do nothing except what the father has revealed to me. It means that Jesus sat at the feet of the father. Remember, the father had not walked into Jerusalem. But he saw what the father wanted, wants him to do. But there was a, an attitude that Jesus carried in regard to his father. To the point that when Jesus rose up, he said, Father, restore unto me. the glory that I shared with you from the beginning. Mm. Glorify me as I have glorified you. Notice Jesus is exactly the same as the Father, but he humbled himself yeah. under the Father so that he can be effective on earth. You see, the issue is, let's say an example, Mama T is a prophet. She is a prophet, actually. Amen. Mama T is a prophet. I am a prophet. If Mama T doesn't know what I have, she will never be at my feet. True. She'll be, yeah, yeah, prophet, love you. Yeah, prophet, yeah, prophet. Yeah. Even me, I'll say prophet, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Papa, yes. You see, there are certain people that are not your friend, but they will be your friend because you don't know who they are. So some people have become too comfortable with God that God cannot allow you to be at his feet. Mm. I see people all the time, Holy Spirit said, Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said, I'm like, do you know who you're talking about? Yeah. Are you mentioning him and he didn't say, do you know the kind of danger you're putting yourself in? Yeah. There are few things that God observes before he can grant you that audience of being at his feet. Mm -hmm. The Bible says it like this. He says, seek me and you'll find me and I will show you things you do not know of. Mm -hmm. The seeking of God is not praying. I know people who have prayed 40 days and 40 nights know nothing. Mm -hmm. There's one time I was, uh, you know, I love to go online and I just observe men of God that are ministering and I look and I check them out spiritually and I'm like, okay, Big future, no future, stubborn, not so stubborn. Mm -hmm. uh, God, you want me to help them or no, no, pass. That's how I've always been. Yeah. I, I went on this uh, profile and there was a Ghanaian uh, man of God, a prophet. So he said, prophet, prophet, oh, prophet, let me prophesy to this prophet. I saw this, oh, you're, you know, he just spoke to me like, I said, oh, God bless you, amen, amen. I didn't go live, he just did whatever and he skipped. Then later on, he went and looked at my profile. Oh, man of God, please release a blessing on me. <laughs> like you see how you people, you just talk mm -hmm. without understanding who you're talking to. Yeah. But me, I'm so chill, I'm so relaxed. I'll say amen. <laughs> like I'm nobody. 
Is this making sense to somebody? Yes. There is a specific posture that is absolutely necessary, absolutely important for you to position yourself a certain way in order for God to allow you to sit un under his feet. The seeking of God is not prayer. Remember, we don't look for God. The word seek means look deep within. It doesn't mean look for him. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. But then before he ascends, he says, if anybody tells you the kingdom of God is over there, the kingdom of God is here, the kingdom of God is over there, he said, don't believe them for the kingdom of God is within you. So to seek God, you don't seek him outside of what he has revealed. See, many of you want something outside of you, yet God is sending you within you. If you don't know what is inside of you, you are not ready to sit at God's feet. Is somebody listening to me? What has God deposited in you? Have you maximized it for you to know that, mm, all right, I need to go and sit at the Lord's feet. Because what God has given me, what God wants for me, I can't fulfill it unless he shows me how to. Yeah. I have a big destiny. I'm just waiting for, for God to do it. You keep waiting. <laughs> God has all the time. You don't. Natasha said, so sitting with Jesus means soaking his, in his glory. Nope. What you guys, guys, don't confuse the presence and the glory. Those are two different things. Glory means reflection of. Reflection of God. You don't soak up the reflection. You experience the reflection of God. Those are two different things. Not the same thing. <laughs> it's okay, Natasha. <laughs> I'm enlightening you, don't worry. <laughs> it is well. Is this making sense? Yeah. So, you don't look for what has already been given to you. Greater is he that is in you the need that is in the world. But you think something that is outside of you is greater. That is why what is inside you cannot grow. Because if you don't know what is inside of you, how do you know what you need to make it grow? What conditions do you need to make it grow? If you don't know what is inside of you, you'll be guessing. You'll be always guessing. 24-7, you'll be guessing. If you don't, and I'm not talking about know your feelings, be in touch with yourself... Understand what God put inside of you. Because what God put inside of you is more than what you think. Is more than what you can imagine. What you need to pursue God for is number one. Lord, what did you deposit inside of me? What did you put inside of me? That I may know it. You see, Jesus for 30 years, he was discovering what was inside of him. When he fully knew what was inside of him, he knew to whose feet he needed to go and bow. Yeah. You cannot fulfill righteousness until you know what is in you. In order for you now to pursue where it can be elevated. For 30 years, Jesus was developing what was inside of him. When he knew now it is the time to meet my open heaven, he knew what feet he went to bow before. Yeah. 
Moses at 40 years, grown full, grown man, is when he meets a man that he goes at his feet. And when he goes to his feet, that man gives him access to his mountain. Moses becomes the great prophet, you know. Without Jethro, there is no Moses. Without knowing what he has put in you, you're not ready to sit at his feet. You can't even sit at his feet. Why? Because everything with God is based on an agenda. Kingdom Vision Assembly International, no, you're wrong. That's not it. The reason why you don't see the face of God is because you've never sat at his feet. These things is in graduation. You graduate. You are built up. The face of God is the most sacred part of God. Not everybody saw God face to face. Not everybody saw God face to face and spoke mouth to mouth like a friend does. Right. Yeah. Very few people did that. Yes. Your base that is at his feet. But many don't even get to the feet. Wow. Is this making sense so far? Let's get those thumbs up. Let's get those thumbs up. I know it's Friday night. People are doing different things, but let's get the thumbs up. Let's get more thumbs up. I need the clock too or else I'll go beyond. So it is absolutely impossible. Oh, guys, I forgot to say this. If you ever get a request from Cash App or Venmo or PayPal, with a profile picture like me demanding you send money. Don't do it. I will never do that. Today somebody sent me a profile of cash up that somebody was asking them for 5,500. That's more money to me, but I will never ask you for that. Never. For what? To request it on whatever. Guys, be wise. Please know. By now you should know my character. I don't need anybody's money. Amen. No. Somebody literally sent me a screenshot with somebody's request, with my profile picture, it says, Lovi Elias. No, don't do it. I would never do that. So FYI, be wise. They, these guys are making cash ups, making all forms of things. Decline and report it. Decline and report it. Okay, back, back to our program. So if you don't know what is inside of you, then you're not ready to sit at somebody's feet. You know where you're supposed to be based on what is inside of you, not what you want, but based on what is inside of you. What you want is not necessarily what God wants. I never wanted to be a prophet. I wanted to be in the Marines. I wanted to be a soldier, go to wars, come back, be a vet, and that's it. Serve, serve my country, that's it. That's really what I wanted. But God started coming to me since I was six. Thank you, Jesus. I tried to dodge it, but never worked out. Is this making sense? Yes. yes. But... When I discovered what God wants of me, I gave myself to what God wants. I was a music producer, very successful too. Grammy nominated and everything. Platinum records and everything. That's what I wanted. God gave me the gift to enjoy what I want before I did what he wants. So you need to know the difference between what you want what you like, and what he wants. 
If you don't know what he wants, you're not ready to be at his feet. To be at the Lord's feet is not praying. It is to be in a position of God pouring into you. If you know where God wants to take you based on what is inside of you, rule number one, stop talking too much. Anybody that talks too much, God can never allow them at his feet because you're not teachable. Nothing wrong with asking questions. That's a good thing. But know when to ask questions. Know when to speak. You see, the ability to know when to, timing, is actually spiritual maturity. If you want to know if you're spiritually mature, you need to know when to. When do I speak? When do I not speak? How do I deal with this person based on their personality and how do I deal with that person based on their personality? Fools will say, this is who I am. And who you are will not open the door that you want. You don't get to God because of what you are. You get to God because of whom he wants you to be. So if you are not willing to change, you're not willing to sit at his feet. Number one, stop talking too much. Develop the fruit of the spirit that is called self-control. Don't talk too much. Be more in the realm of listening than speaking. Sometimes when I want to reveal certain things to people, I will sit with you, talk with you a little bit. And when I just realize that you know too much, I'll keep quiet. Last night I was texting with my son Mike until I believe 3 a.m. I was teaching him something. He, he did service really well. I was like, okay, good. I was like, all right, good job. Good job, all right. We need to do some updates and some upgrades. You've been due for software update <laughs> you've been too busy so i gave him some things to look at and i taught him some things and then we'll get together at another time so the reason why i can do with him that is because i know he will take in everything he won't talk too much he will take in and mike has been with me since uh, what is it called since the beginning out of everybody that was around, he was the first one that says, I will take in everything. And he's the one that grew quickly. Super anointed, Mike. Uh, Mike is deep. Extremely anointed. Extremely, extremely anointed. You would never know, but he's extremely anointed. So, these things matter to God. When Jesus was told, go to the cross, he never argued. Even his argument was, if it is your will, <laughs> not mine, your will. Then God comforted him. Many of you can't even receive comfort from God because it's always about what you want. If God is going to send you to do something that is difficult, he will also comfort you. So understand this by the Spirit. Talking is not just the mouth. Some people you are talking to them and you can see their mind going everywhere. <laughs> you want to explain to them but their mind is wandering everywhere. You immediately know, hmm, Mama T is here. Mama T is leading a great movement. Mm. Ah, but if you see Mama T's text to me, it's shocking. So there is the ability to silence your mind and understand that 
my reasoning capacity must go together with my spiritual capacity. If I don't understand it, then I cannot do it again. Let me chillax. Let me listen. One percent is enough to change my whole story. Amen. Yes. Let me take in even that one percent. Don't think. Listen first. Absorb first, then think about it. You can't think when you are receiving. Yeah. You receive, then you have a moment to think about it. Yeah. Some people don't even know how to ob absorb while they are th talking, they're already painting their own picture. This is how I'm going to do it. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. That will deny you access to the feet. Help us. Be moldable. I haven't told you how to get at his feet yet. I'm just telling you what you need to be qualified for his feet. Be moldable. If you're not moldable, you are not permitted at his feet. Despite how great you are, if you're not moldable, you're not ready to sit at the Lord's feet. I was talking to to uh, one of the fathers, Prophet Angel. Prophet Angel called me. And he said, uh, son, how are you? I said, I'm fine. He said, well, I just bought a church building in New York and I wanted to know how you set up, how you did this, how you did that, how you did this, how you did that, how you did this, how you did that, how you did this, how you got your team, how does it operate? And I sat down and I was like, Wow. Despite the experience of planting I don't know how many churches, he's moldable enough to call somebody that he has mentored to tell him how he did it. Mm -hmm. And he told me, son, you see me, I'm still learning. Imagine I will call you to learn something. I've never done it. I would be a fool to go and do it without asking you, even though you are a son who has been able to do it. I thought to myself, I said, ah, this is a wealthy man, a powerful man, but he's still calling to get advice on something he has not done. You are ready to advise somebody how to prophesy you've never prophesied. You are ready to teach somebody about angels you've never met one. To feel like angels are around you and to interact with them, two different things. To be able to call them and sit down with them like this, a different thing. A lot of people talk about angels and I just look, I'm like, mm, wow. <laughs> you have to know who you're communicating with because if you don't know who you're communicating with, the moment somebody feels resistance that they can't mold you even though they love you, they won't teach you. They will love you, they will care for you, but they will not teach you. The reason why they will not teach you is because they understand the molding, what it can do for you. And if you're not ready to be molded, it will be a waste of time. The Lord took Jeremiah to the potter's house. And he said, look at how the potter is dealing with the clay. If the pot doesn't look the way he wants it to, he smashes it and, redoes, and it rebuilds it. He said, Israel, you are my people, but I can't mold you people. And because I can't mold you, I will send you into bondage. If you let me mold you, you won't go through all these troubles. Do you realize many of you, 99% of you, are suffering because you're, mold, you're not moldable? You know too much. I got to do it on my own. <laughs> I don't know who you're trying to prove to anybody. Prove with success. Don't prove with struggle. People want to prove how mighty and powerful they are with struggles. No, prove how great you are, how mighty you are, how 
powerful you are with success, not struggle. When did struggle ever benefit anybody? When did struggle ever lift anybody up? It's never been beneficial to anybody. Spiritual warfare doesn't mean you're great. I know, I, I know people who are always, uh, I'm fighting spiritual battles, I'm fighting spiritual battles. You, ten years you're still fighting spiritual battles. Which devil is this that you can't defeat? It means you need to look outside of yourself. Is it okay if I share this? Absolutely. There was a day uh, Mama T was ministering. And we were been working on some deliverance stuff. And Mama T is casting out devils like crazy. Then she encountered this demon that was stubborn. At that time, not now, but at that time, that spirit was more powerful than I. It manifested. It couldn't do anything to her. She said, Papa, I said, don't worry, I'm going to come in the evening, we'll figure it out. In the evening when I came, I opened my mouth. Everywhere there was a demon. <laughs> out, finished. Two seconds. She came and told me, okay, Papa, I don't know why was it Difficult for me, this, this. I said, no, it wasn't difficult. It was not just somewhere you are promoted. Let's do this and do this. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, that, that, that thing will never be a problem again. Yeah. Do you understand? Because even the disciples went through this. And Jesus had to show them how to. Yeah. Yeah. So, you need to ask yourself a very simple question. Are you moldable? Because... If a man cannot rebuke you and correct you, God knows that he can't rebuke you and correct you. Yeah, if I can't come and tell you and tell you, go to the gym, <laughs> you're like, ah, oh, but how could you say that was insensitive? God knows you, you can't. Yet the gym is good for you. Uh, some people are laughing with the, with with the, a little bit saltiness. <laughs> no, I'm I'm serious. If I can't look at you and say you are foolish, uh, I don't know if somebody can understand what I'm trying to say. I'm going to show you guys something really powerful. Let, 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 let me try and do this. Is, is somebody getting this? Yes. It is absolutely necessary for you to know these things because if you don't know them, you are stuck. You can't go anywhere. You can't increase. You can't become... Uh, 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 what God wants you to be. You will always be shallow. Always be shallow because you're not moldable. You have to be moldable. I don't know if somebody's listening to me. Yes. You have to be moldable. Amen. If you're not moldable, forget about God ever dealing with you. Forget about God ever dealing with you. It will not happen. I, I always use this story. One day when I was serving, when I was serving um, Papa Hubert Angel. And we were in the hotel and I was with uh, Ricky and other people, some of his sons. And we are sitting there. And he was saying a lot of things and teaching a lot of things, and I was just like, oh, yeah, I, I saw something like that. He just stopped everything. He said, Lovi, of all my sons, you are the most anointed of them, but you are the most foolish. <laughs> mm. Yeah, in front of everybody. 
Say, yes, Papa. I am foolish. Please correct. Say, don't talk. Keep quiet. Just take. I know you have experiences. But the one I want to open for you, you've never been. I said, yes, Papa. I stayed quiet. Another time I was with now my father. <laughs> the gaff. We are driving in the car. We were talking about a lot of things and this, this, this. This is years when I met him in 2013, 2014. He told me, you know, sometimes you can talk too much. I said, yes, Papa. I said, control that. Don't get too excited that you forget that you're talking too much. The other one was I was contributing too much. This one, you're talking too much. I said, yes, Papa. From then, you can sit with me. And I can be so quiet, you will not even understand. Not because talking is bad. I love making conversation. But I will not over talk. Quiet. If I'm among men of God, you will never know that I know more than them. I will look like a fool. Just let them talk and let them. Those who know me. I remember uh, uh, one of my friends, uh, uh, Anita. She came from Ghana. You met her. When she met me when I visited Ghana to minister, she never knew how deep I was until she came here. And I met her two years ago. When she came, and some of you would say, ah, Papa Lo, I didn't know you were deep like this. <laughs> and you're too simple. I didn't know it was like this. These are things that will deny you access. Get rid of offense. Yes. Some of you are too hypersensitive. You're soft. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> you are too soft. Nothing wrong with... Uh, nothing wrong with... Uh, being emotional. I'm very sensitive too. But I don't get offended. If it benefits me, I receive it. If it is an insult, that's not me, so it doesn't matter to me. You imagine how many messages I get. You go on my videos, you see some positive stuff. You also see some bad ones. Wizard, witch, this, that, that. Some people you've even helped turn against you. It is what it is. It's not a big thing. It's not a big thing for me. It's whatever. It's completely whatever for me. I learned that what doesn't build me is not useful for me to give it attention. That's good. If it builds me, even if it hurts, I will take it. So many Christians are too soft. God is not very gentle. God will shoot straight with you. <laughs> God will shoot straight with you. Straight. You need to be somebody that can be rebuked and you're okay. And you understand that rebuke is for your good. It is a representation of love. God chastises those whom he loves. If God has never smacked you, understand that he doesn't love you. No, that's real. If God has never smacked you, he doesn't love you. Huh? Yeah, sometimes you pow. Love me more, Lord. <laughs> if he's never smacked you, you don't know his love yet.
This next one is also important. Be somebody that can follow direction. Too many Christians cannot follow direction. People will do directions based on what they feel like, not what they have been told to do. That is how usually people are. They will do what they want to do, the way they think they should do it, not the way they are being told. Nothing makes me more upset than that, especially if I am speaking from God. Oh, I will, look, man of God, I need this. Okay, do this and do this and do this. The moment you don't do it, I will never give you direction again. Done. If God tells you to walk a certain path, and you don't walk on it. You just reaped death. If you walk on the path of life, you reap life. If God tells you go left, I don't need to understand why God said go left. I know I will understand when I see the outcome. Yeah. Yes. Today I was telling the kids, let's go. I'm going to be late for the gym. And I'm going to be late. They're like, where are we going? I said, when I tell you, let's go somewhere. Don't tell me where are we going. You put on your stuff and we go. Simple. Because when it comes to God, if God tells you to do something and you're waiting for reference and confirmation, you will miss the wave of God. God wants nothing but the, same for, the best for you. So if you know God wants the best for you and God tells you go this way, why would you fight him? Is this making sense? Yes. So you really need to, to think about this with every single thing that is in you. With every single thing that is in you. with every single thing that is in you. Am I easy to take direction or do I fight direction? If I'm told to do something, do I undermine the person who's telling me because I think they are smarter so I'm going to do my own? You miss God completely. These things seem very small. They are a very big deal to God. Notice, all I have focused on is character, the attitude of one who can sit at his feet. I have not yet told you how to sit at his feet, but if these things are not together, you can't sit at his feet. You cannot, you are not even permitted, you can't even come close. There is the character of humility. People pretend to be humble, but they are not humble. Yeah. If these things are not in you that we just mentioned, you're not humble. You are a pretender. You are a big time pretender. Big time pretender. I'm going to be nice to Papa Lo, but if. If uh, uh, Andre comes, tells me something. Oh, Andre, what's up, man? Uh, Papa Lo told me to tell you to do this. Ah, you, you, are you sure? Immediately, God looks and says, you have false humility. There is a way to do things. This is not a matter of prayer. This is a matter of the posture to be at his feet. The posture of being at his feet. 
I'm going to show you one more thing. And then after I show you this. Oh, actually, no, let's go and give and then we'll come back. I'm going to show you this one thing. We'll start getting into the spiritual part now and show you the effects of being able to have that posture of going uh, to his feet. Let's go quickly and give and come back.
was all alone on my own on my lonesome then you changed me i used to be on one yeah you raised me and then got me your son brand new name in exchange for my old one i was lost now i'm found then you sent me i was blind now i see 2020 i give thanks for the day that you came into my life on my side where would i be if it hadn't been for the lord who was on my side oh yeah however you did it i don't know you came and you did it pro bono you just keep on making a way and you calling these plays for my future like romo i used to keep taking the wrong road now watch how i'm breaking these strongholds and yeah, you made me beautiful you know that you the go you came and gave me a song i was lost now i'm found then you sent me i was blind now i see 2020 i give thanks for the day that you came into my life on my side where would i be if it hadn't been for the lord who was on my side oh where would i be i would be mistaken struggle with police and have me shaking on somebody t-shirt no graven you could hear the choir singing about grace and could have been shot down like my brother died for his Jordans. Could have been laying out in the street, you know where the chalk is. That's why I'm grateful when I wake up in the morning. Cause I stay up in my father's hands like Spalding. No lie, we talking serious. Hospital room feeling delirious. It took my grave to a garden, took a broken heart and back to where it started. Oh, I just say thank you. I wish I had enough to repay you Cause when it's all said and done I can only give the credit for love
God bless you all. Thank you for all those who have given and sacrificing. Uh, I want you to go to this scripture real quick. I want you to go to Luke, no, John, uh, yeah. hold on, yeah, I got it right here. Luke 8, Luke chapter 8. From verse 26. Luke 8 from 26. Luke chapter 8 from verse 26. Mm -hmm. And they arrived at the country of Gadarenes, mm -hmm. which is over against Galilee. Mm -hmm. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God most high? Beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters and he brake the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, what is thy name? Stop right there. Jesus just arrived. This man is running to his feet, saying, what do you want with me, Jesus of Nazareth? Don't torment me. Then the next verse said, because Jesus said, come out of him. Jesus didn't say, come out of him physically. Yeah. 
Jesus just came into town. Somebody ran at his feet down. What do you want with me, Jesus of Nazareth, son of the Most High God? Jesus asked, who are you? <laughs> what is your name? It means Jesus was not engaging with him. Yeah. When your feet are lifted to a certain dimension, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. you become a territorial commander. Yeah, when demons see you, they know where to position themselves in order to be safe. The demon came to beg not to be tormented at his feet. He didn't get it. He knew he can negotiate better with Jesus at his feet. Did somebody understand that? Many of your prayers will be answered if you know how to get to his feet. But correct the character first. If Jesus could answer a demon's prayer, a demon begged him, don't torment us. What is your name? My name is Legion, for we are many. Okay. Can you allow us to go to the pigs over there? And then we'll leave this place. Say, so, okay, go. Jesus didn't torment them. They begged him. We beg you, don't torment us. And Jesus answered the prayer of a demon because he knew how to be at his feet. Uh, some of you didn't hear what I'm saying. There is a certain posture you guys lack that it prevents you from entering that next place. Father, bless your people. As they hear this, let them be changed. Glorify yourself through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, don't forget, Monday we have deliverance service. It's going to be on Zoom and on YouTube. It's not going to be in person. It's going to be on Zoom and YouTube. Um, if anybody sends you any request on Cash App, Venmo, or PayPal, it is never me. All the givings for the church are on the website, the church's website or my personal website. I will never request money for you. I will never ask money from you. I don't do that. So, or anybody who messages you, uh, I, some, uh, dear, dear beloved, I don't know you, but God knows you. Send your prayer to prayer at prophetlovi.com at gmail.com. That's not me. It doesn't work like that. I have no time to be DMing you to tell you to send prayer requests. So, God bless you. Watch this again. I wanted to go to the spiritual part, but I felt like this is necessary. Thank you, so there may be a part three. That is the most important one, but you need this before that one. Amen. So God bless you. I love you, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.